So more generally, xih of p1 up to pn u bar has to be equal to xim of p1 up to pn c of p1 up to pn u bar. So that's just the generalized version of that. That is, if I had an n good problem, for any one of the goods, that same relationship has to hold. Okay? Everybody follows that. So now if I take the derivative of both sides with respect to a price, I'm going to get partial xih, partial pj on this side, because this is just the Hicksian demand curve, so the partial derivatives of that are just the partial derivatives of the Hicksian demand curve, is equal to what? Partial xim partial pj, that's because pj shows up here, plus partial xim partial m, that is the derivative of the Marshallian demand curve with respect to income, times the derivative of the cost function with respect to the price of good j, which is what? What's the derivative of the cost function with respect to the price of good j? It's a quantity of good j. It's the quantity of good J. So that's the mar that's, this is known as the Slutsky equation. It allows me to go back and forth between the derivatives of the Hicksian system on the one hand and the derivatives of the Marshallian system on the other. It tells me how utility constant responses to changes in prices are related to income constant changes in prices. And the difference between these two comes from this, what we call in economics, the income effect. And to think about where the income effect comes from, it's pretty easy. Okay, so let's, let me put this over on this side because I think it's the easier way to think about it. So I'm going to write partial xim, partial pj, equals partial xih partial pj minus xj partial xi partial m. So that's the rewritten version of the Slutsky equation, just moving this over to the other side. And it says, this is what we call the Marshallian effect. is what we would call the Hicksian effect, which we often call the substitution effect. That is holding income constant. How would this person respond? And this is what we call the income effect. And where does this income effect come from? Well, why does it have the form it does? Can anybody explain where this income effect comes from and why it has the form it does? Yeah? When the price of Increases. Good J. That's yeah, the one that's changing here. When price of J goes up by a dollar. Um, even if you wanted to just keep buying the same amount of good J, which is sort of an approximation of your behavior, um, then you have to spend more of your budget on the same amount of good J, and then there's less left over to buy other goods, so you have to decrease all your other purchases to compensate for the extra income good J. Yeah, I mean, the, the way to think about it is this. I'm buying 10 units of good J. The price of good J goes up by a dollar. I'm effectively, at that point, $10 poorer than I was before. To buy what I bought before would cost $10 more than it used to, right? I got a dollar extra on each of the 10 units. Now, I won't necessarily buy the same amount of good J, but I got to buy less of something, right? I can't buy the same amount of everything I used to buy i got to reduce consumption, and, if, and roughly speaking, I'm worse off to the tune of about 10 bucks. That's about how much worse I am. Again, the way to think about it is back to where we started the quarter. I'm basically approximating my indifference curve by the budget line. And it says, you know, that, that loss is roughly a $10 equivalent. If you go back to the first day, we talked about moving along that budget line. So that's XJ. That's, that's, that's how much I'm losing, okay? And then it says, well, I'm $10 poorer. How much do I reduce good I every time I'm $10 poorer? That, this is telling me how responsive good I is to income. 
So basically, when the price of good J goes up, it's going to have a substitution effect for I. Now, when I say substitution effect, that could either be a complementarity relationship or a substitution relationship, depending on the goods. That's the response I would get holding utility constant. But there's a separate income term. Now, what determines whether there's this income term is big or small is mostly how important is good J in my budget. If I make $100,000 a year, this $10 change in annual income is really a trivial change in my income. And this income effect is probably going to be very, very small, probably too small to even think about measuring. On the other hand, if I spend 30% of my budget on this good, income effect is going to be pretty big. Right? I've effectively, for every 1% this good goes up in price, I'm going to lose 0.3% in real income if I'm spending 30% of my income on the good. So first thing I always ask about income effects is how important are they? Are they big, small? For some goods, income effects are important. For other goods, they're not so important. 